Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to answer one of the common questions I'm getting about this program on the Ice Cream Fitness 2.0 Novice Program, and one of the questions I'm getting is, what do we do for the cutting version? Why don't you have a cutting version? Um, and that's pretty straightforward, honestly, because for most people, the original version was probably too much, and I did a cutting version as a version for people who, number one, couldn't handle the workload, uh, number two, people who wanted to cut. And I followed the standard recommendations that you find most coaches out there recommend when they have an athlete or a lifter who wants to lose body weight. They want to go into a weight loss phase. They usually cut their volume by about a third, and then they reduce their progression. In the case of this, even novices are going to be able to make good progression while cutting, or at least some progression usually, if they have enough body fat to facilitate actual cutting. Um, so that's the method I did. I went with the standard protocol for that, which is, is nothing unusual there. However, the problem is that it created this idea that it's acceptable for novices to cut, right? And I think that that did more harm than good. I think that did more harm with good because I put out a very popular program. A lot of people got good results and I felt like maybe it was a little bit extreme on the total workload and I streamlined it uh, to make it more usable for people for a wider variety of applications, right? For people who want to gain, uh, people who want to recomp a bit, for people who maybe compete in, in other sports outside of just lifting. It was originally intended to be a hypertrophy program for people with perfect lifestyles. Well, perfect lifestyles includes a caloric surplus. Perfect lifestyle includes eight hours of sleep every night. Perfect lifestyle includes in competing in nothing and no stressful physical activity outside of your, your workouts, right? That's a perfect lifestyle. Well, that's almost nobody. That's a very, very tiny number of people. This program is more versatile. Now, the problem we have is that, it, again, it gave this idea that it's acceptable for a novice to cut. And I don't think it's ever acceptable to tell a novice to cut. People say, oh my God, I can't believe you said that. What if they're fat? Well, if you're fat, the last thing that needs to be on your mind is making your novice gains. In other words, if you're morbidly obese to the point to where your health is a concern, is maximizing progress really something you should be worried about? Meaning if you're 50 pounds overweight, do you honestly think your primary goal in life should be to gain as much muscle as you possibly can over the next six months? Should your goal in life be to add as much weight to your squat and bench press and overhead press and all of that as possible in the next six months? Well, what's the point of a novice program? A novice program is designed to put as much muscle as humanly possible onto a person. Intermediate programs, advanced programs, those things are not physically capable of maximizing the same degree of muscle growth that a novice program is. Therefore, novice programs are written and programmed in such a manner that maximizes that, right? We're trying to maximize adaptation every single week, actually every single workout, right? We don't even have lighter workouts because we don't need those, we can't afford those. We're stimulating maximum growth because novices are physically capable of doing so. They're in their golden months, their, their honeymoon months, so to speak, right? They're ready to make enormous amounts of gains in muscle mass. You program accordingly. Well. You can't cut and do that. So you wouldn't even try to run such a thing. You wouldn't even say, well, I'm gonna get a cutting version. And here's the other point. I'm gonna be frank with you guys. People have this idea that they can have it all, right? This is the reason trend is so popular among guys who barely even learned how to lift. Why? Because they want everything right now. They don't seem to grasp the concept that you have to go through stages. Like it, it, it almost doesn't occur to a lot of starting lifters because of, of this demographic, and number one, being younger, number two, kind of uh, younger people in general, the way the culture is, everything is, it, there's a quick fix for everything. That's what's oftentimes taught in society, taught in marketing, that you can have everything all at once. It's almost this mindset of you're in high school and then you decide that you wanna be a medical doctor next year with medical doctors pay and no student loans, right? Well, you can want in one hand and you can shit in the other and see which one fills up faster. It's the same thing with deciding that you're going to get as big as possible and get ripped at the same time, right? So what's going to happen? It encourages guys that they should worry about their razor sharp abs that they could cut some chick's face with, I guess. They want abs so sharp that they could cut people. They could use them as a weapon. They want that, but then they think that they're going to gain muscle at the same time. Um, 
that is delusional. And yes, I know there are people who market that and tell them, oh yeah, you can totally do that. Just buy my program and eat 300 grams of protein a day and buy my Curl Lean X program and you can stay ripped and, and be jacked. But then none of the people end up being jacked. You notice that? They don't, they don't actually get big. They don't actually get strong. They don't get any of these things. Why? Because they're getting lean. Um, if you are not morbidly obese and need to cut for a health reason, you don't need to be worried about, can I lose body fat in your first year in the gym? You need to build a base. Because if you don't, you're gonna waste a lot of that time. If you come in and you half-ass it, and you spin your wheels and you spend time, if you're you know five foot eight or five foot nine and you're 150 pounds, 160 pounds, and you don't spend your first year gaining some body weight, gaining some muscle mass, putting some size on, you are not gonna get back those early adaptations. You will have squandered much of your noob gains you're gonna end up being smaller and probably fatter than you could have been two or three years from now as a result of that. Because you decided in your head that you were gonna get ripped and you were gonna gain muscle at the same time in your first year. Uh, and if I have a cutting version of a novice program up, I'm encouraging that sort of delusion, right? I'm encouraging that delusion and it is delusion. But Let, let's be clear on what that is. That is a marketing delusion that has been sold to people. It's not reality. Again, unless Trend and, and Anavar and everything else come to the mix, the right drugs, it can be pulled off. But I'm also going to tell you guys, a first-year lifter also doesn't need to be pinning a bunch of Trend. Right? I, I think that would be a real, real bad idea. I think it would be a real bad idea. So you need to be gaining size. You need to be gaining strength. You need to be maximizing your growth. And I'm not telling you to bulk till you become a big fat lard ass, right? I'm not telling you you need to bulk up to 25% body fat, right? Because if, again, when you say that, when you tell people they need to gain some weight, they need to gain some muscle, not worried about cuts, again, people's mindset of everything is black and white. Everything's extreme. It's all the way to extreme. There is no middle ground ever. All they hear is, of course, no, he's telling us that we should get fat, that we should bulk to 30% body fat and have a 60-inch waist and a gut that hangs three feet over our belt, right? That, that's what they hear, that they need to be 400 pounds of lard. Um, that, that's, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, let's go back to the point. You're starting at 160 pounds. You probably need to bulk up to 170. You probably need to bulk up to 180, right? You probably should spend that first 9, 10, 12 months in the gym putting on about 20 pounds. I don't care if you feel like you're a little bit skinny fat right now. Clean bulk. I'm not saying you have to gain a pound every week, but you need to have a general gradual upward trend of the scale. You're going to look better for it anyways. You know, so let's say you are starting out at 16% body fat at 160 pounds and you bulk up to 180 and you end up being, I don't know, 17% body fat maybe even 18% body fat, my God. You're still gonna look bigger and leaner than you did at the start. You're gonna look less skinny fat than when you started. But what you are gonna have is another 15 pounds of muscle. And now that you've got that extra 15 pounds of muscle that you gained relatively quickly, more quickly than you're ever gonna gain muscle again the rest of your life, what, what can you do now? Well, your metabolic rate is higher. You got more muscle, you're gonna find it easier to cut down. Now you don't have to worry about progression as much. You've built a base. You've got a base. You've got some decent lifts. You've got some decent muscle mass. You've got a good metabolic rate. You're, you're probably in decent shape. Now you can cut your food back. Now you can add in a little bit of conditioning work. Now you can say, okay, now I don't need to worry about progressing and gaining muscle as much. I, I need to drop about 10 pounds of body fat. You know, I need to drop about 10 pounds of body fat. I want to see some abs. I need to lose 10, 11 pounds right then you can do that and it's going to be easier and you're going to get there more efficiently but if you're standing around worried about your razor sharp abs that can cut glass instead of being scared to gain a couple pounds of fat you're not going to gain build your base you're not going to build your base it's going to take you three years to build the base that you should have built in nine months that's what's going to happen and then you're going to be one of those guys who stands there and says, oh, Jason's full of shit when he says the average novice lifter who's not a strength athlete should be deadlifting 400 pounds within a year. 
Oh, he says, well, I should be benching 225 for a couple reps. Right? Oh, God, he's so full of shit. That's the guys who are saying that. The guys who are like, I've been training for two years and I still haven't reached that. It's like, yeah, because you were spinning your reels for the first year. You didn't take my advice and the advice of other people and build your base and not worry about your abs and everything for, you know, for nine months, 10 months, a year. Put some size on and then cut down. Uh, because you didn't do that, now you're still a novice after two years, right? You're two years of training, three years of training, and you're still smaller and weaker than you should have been at the end of your first year in the gym. Because of bad choices and thinking that you could actually obtain all these things all concurrently, right? That you could just do five years worth of stuff in nine months. Well, that's, that's not reality. That's a delusion. And if me as a long-term YouTuber who puts out material year after year after year wants to keep my long-term audience, I can't give you guys shitty advice like that and expect you to stick around. When the guys hear this advice and say, oh, Jason's just a big fat power lifter giving us shitty advice, when they don't reach their goals in a year, then they'll realize and then talk to other more experienced lifters and they'll find out, oh, he was, he was kind of right. Maybe I should listen to this guy. Then you'll come back. When you don't listen to me now and then you find out later I was right, I'll get you back. But if I lie to you now and tell you this stupid shit is possible, I'm going to have to be like Broly next and recycle new people every year. And, and I'd rather just keep a lot of my original people by being just honest with them, right? That's my business model. Give you guys the truth and the good advice now, whether you want to hear it or not, and either keep you when you get the results or have you come back when you realize in a couple years, because I'm still going to be here, two or three years and you realize I was right, you're, you're going to come back. And then I've got you, right? Because I was honest with you up front, unlike these other guys. All right, guys, but well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.